What's up everyone, it's Russo. I hope everyone is doing well. Please follow my Instagram at Russo Lifts just in case something happens to this YouTube channel. You can follow, message, and you can watch my daily story content on Instagram. I'll see you there. For one, we get more side effects. We've seen it with injectable SARMs, with mega dosing SARMs, the impact on cholesterol and you know, a lot of uh, uh, factors, but the results are not linear as you would see with steroids. So like with Tren or with DECA, if you were to, even with them, it's not linear forever, but if you keep on increasing the dosage, like usually you grow more, like you get more anabolism. With SARMs, that's not the case. Like whether you take uh, 100 mg of S23 versus 150, you wouldn't be noticing more gains. I would so say against that for injectable LGD4033. Like when I would do like 20 milligrams oral versus injecting 50 milligrams a day, it wasn't right. nearly like I got bigger if I could keep up eating with it. But how, 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 how high did you test it though? Again, that would reach a peak where after that it would not work to the extent of something if, if I just, steroids. Yeah, I just kept it injecting at 50 milligrams a day. I didn't go above. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so basically, each SARM may have different properties with it because Osterine, for example, I mean, we tried mega dosing Osterine, and I don't think it really did that much more than the lower dosage. So it definitely had a plateau. Uh, but LGD forty thirty three, like the higher we go in the dosage, the more it works. The more. It's interesting. Though. It's it, it differs to whether we're talking about binding affinity and efficacy so like some SARMs have a greater binding affinity than steroids than tests for example so they outperform testosterone as far as attaching to the receptor but as far as efficacy and signaling and activating the receptor they're not as strong so to speak so like a uh, 500 mg of testosterone would give you way more muscle growth than utilizing you know whatever dose of osterin for example even though osterin would outcompete testosterone at, at the receptor side, you know? So that's interesting. The whole key would be to find something that has a high signaling, a, a very strong efficacy as far as signaling goes and activating DR without actually, you know, binding to receptor sites that are, you know, unwanted, such as prostate, hair follicles, skin, you know, kidneys, because androgens also, you know, they, they impact all organs. So over time, you know, the prostate will suffer, the kidneys would suffer, the heart would suffer, you know, if they're not selective. So it's a matter of finding one that does not, you know, attach to those receptor sites and is very efficacious as far as uh, uh, androgenic signaling goes for muscle growth. And I've yet to see, you know, we've been stuck in, in the SARM department. Uh, AC-262 is not really that new. It's, I think, since 2000. And 18 or yeah, seven a couple years ago not like it's not like we have them each year breaking through which i don't understand why you know it's they're research chemicals like does no nobody give a shit about them or, or like what's going on do, do you have any inside information you mean on the pharmaceutical side or on the underground yeah. bodybuilding side pharmaceutical both both on the pharmaceutical side, they're moving forward. Uh, like Osterine is is getting pretty close to FDA approval. 